Hi everyone, it's Wednesday, we are live at 5. I'm going to wait a few minutes for people to jump in. We had 24 people register for this training. So apparently everybody wants to know what not to do, right? So I'm going to wait a couple of minutes here. Um, and we're going to set my phone up actually so I can see the comments. I know last time I was having a little bit of an issue. So let me get this going so I can see the comments. So I have one viewer. Um, if you are tuning in for the first time, say hi. Tell me where you're from. If you're tuning in for the 25,000th time, say hi so I can see you. Um, I may not be able to see you on my desktop, um, but if I can't, I'm going to see you on my phone. So let me know you're here. I'm just going to say hello. I usually wait a couple minutes for people to log in. Let's see. Tell me where you are from. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Posting. So I will see it. I see a couple of comments on my phone. Hi, Sydney. Sydney, I miss you. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Candace. What's going on, Candace? I have a. I think. I think I owe you something. I'm standing up, by the way. Um, my back's been bothering me a little bit, so I'm going to stand up. So I may be moving around a little bit with my hands because I'm standing up, but it's feeling better. Um, I've been at the chiropractor and massage therapist because my neck's not been feeling that great. So trying to fix that. Hi, Belinda. I know. I'm sorry, Sydney. All right. All right. I don't miss you. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how to say your name. Hi, M.G. Duenas. I don't know. Is that your first name or what's your first name? Wisconsin. All right. Hi, Hel. Is it Hel? Helly? Might be Helly. Uh, is that short for Helen? My mother's name is Helen. Oh, my cat. My cat wants to go up. Hold on. Let me let my cat out. Hold on. Come on. Go. Go ahead. Go. Hello, my cat was wanting to go out. Um, sore neck and back is no joke. Yep, yep. You're talking to the habitual girl. So what I found out that I was when I was on my computer, I was leaning my neck down over and over and over again. I work on the couch sometimes, and you know I'm having issues. So have to fix that. Have to change my ways. Right? We all have to change our change our ways. Um, so yep, yeah, 24 people tonight on the call. Uh, two maybes. There'll be people on the replay. So that obviously means something to us, right? It means something that people want to hear this training. So let me just, let's get going. Does anyone else want to say hi? Tell me where you're from. Anyone that I've missed? Anyone that I've missed? No? Maybe we see one right here. Kaylin, I owe you. I owe you a message. I just got back from being out of town um, last night, so I'm going to be following up with people in the next few weeks. Hi, Jamie. We have a call at 615. Jamie is part of the Accelerator program that is this evening. It's usually Tuesdays at 5, um, but I forgot that I was coming back from um, being in Florida for the weekend for my son's 21st birthday, so luckily Jamie was gave me grace and I could change it. So we have our call this evening. So super excited, Jamie's doing some awesome things with our marketing, rebranding, changing a name, exciting stuff. Kaylin, Ontario, Canada. So you're in the same time zone as me. I'm in Boston, so I think we're in the same time zone. Um, so we will get started. Um, like I said, I'm standing up. Um, I'm probably gonna be a lot more animated because I'm standing up, so just bear with me. Um, for those of you that don't know me, that are new, uh, my name is Cheryl Hazer. I am a cleaning business coach and I'm also an owner of a cleaning business um, called Made Bright Cleaning. I am from Boston, Massachusetts, so I am a northern girl. Um, and I help cleaning business owners get out of their own way, which is half the battle. Um, learn how to sell, hire, and scale their businesses. I took my own business. I started as a solo cleaner. Uh, I told you I'd be talking with my hands. And I scaled my own Rather quickly, taking it from zero to over 700,000 and growing. We launched a power washing business. I say we because I started the business, but my husband saw that it was going crazy, so he joined me um, a few years back. We launched a power washing biz business aside of the cleaning, and now we clean the inside and the outside of people's homes. So um, if anyone's looking for an additional revenue stream, it's a great revenue stream because you're cleaning the outside of the homes. 
um, still the cleaning industry, still the service industry, just different pricing, different sales tactics, um, and quite a lot more skill <laughs> involved actually. So I love what I do. I'm obsessed with creating success stories. I love my clients as they impress me every single day with their resilience and their willingness to go the extra mile to keep pushing through and they love sharing success stories. Um, and you'll see them, I post them in the group. It's the favorite thing that I write is the success stories of my clients because I'm so incredibly proud of them and their people are doubling, they're tripling their revenues, they're hiring teams, they're getting out of the field and that makes me so extremely happy. Um, you have no idea. More happy than my cleaning company making income. It's very, it's much more impactful um, for me that in a way that I never thought was gonna be um, as impactful. So super cool. For those of you that are new um, to the group, I go live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. You can also catch it on replay. These trainings are recorded so you can always catch the replay. Um, I'm working on something super exciting and super cool, but it won't be ready for a few months. Um, my goal is to always give you as much value as I possibly can. That's why I am constantly working to make your experience in the Sisters Who Scale group absolutely fantastic. Okay, so on was tonight's training. So we always talk about what to do in your cleaning business to grow, um, and I thought tonight training could be on what not to do okay and maybe do a check to see if you're doing some of these things right things to avoid that will actually cause harm to your business because sometimes we have no idea what's hurting us right if someone doesn't say hey you're screwing up right <laughs> so success in the cleaning industry depends on various factors because there are several common mistakes and pitfalls that can lead to failure. So if you want to fail in your business, let's talk about the ways that you are actually sabotaging your business. So if you want to grab a pen, piece of paper, a notebook, um, we'll go over them. I'm just going to check in and see. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? If you're coming on for the first time, jump on, say hi, tell me where you're from. Um, all right. So number one, lack of planning. This is the biggest thing you cannot wing this ladies you can't wing it so who here has a business plan did anyone do one raise your hands if anyone has a business plan if you're in the accelerator program you do have a document that helps you outline um you know what a business plan would look what revenue forecasts look like and things like that um raise your hand if you have a business plan i'm going to go over and see See who's doing the business plan, see who's not. Um, so who here writes down their goals every month or even every quarter, right? Why is planning so important? Because it gives you a roadmap of where you wanna get to. So think of it like this. If you take a trip and you don't look at a map or don't pull up the GPS, how do you know where you're going? You could go down a wrong road. You could go down a dead end road with Michael Myers down it, right? Or something, you, you, could, you could break down at a crazy looking gas station out of a horror movie, you don't know what to do. So when we go on a trip, what do we have? We always have an itinerary, right? Or if we're going on a plane, we have plane tickets, we have all these things. So a car, we have a hotel, who's picking us up, who's dropping us off, right? And then like, you always have to have a plan to where you're going. Your business is no different. And your business actually is more important than taking a trip. And you may hear me call it winging it like I did. So don't wing your business, okay? Don't wing it. Winging your business is a surefire way to do harm to your business in many ways. Flying by the seat of your pants, same thing as winging it, right? It can lead to poor decision making and lack of direction, okay? So you have to plan. You have to have revenue goals. You have to have strategizing goals. You have to have team goals, management goals. God, you have to have expansion goals. You have to have territorial goals. There's a lot of goals um, that you have to have or else you're just kind of gonna be like throwing darts like at the, you know, at the wall and, and hoping something sticks. So you don't want to do that. So number one, is lack of planning. Number two is ignoring your market research. If you want to fail in your company, do this. Don't bother researching any of your target market or your customer preferences 
or who your competition is and what they are charging and what services they offer. This way, you'll be completely oblivious to marketing trends and customer needs, okay? You have to do all of the above. So one of the first things that I have my clients do in the Accelerator program, we work on who your target market is because we're all in different areas of the country, so we may have different target markets. Ask Jamie, she's gonna tell you. She's got an amazing, I'm so psyched for this, She's got an amazing target market. She is a nurse as well as a cleaning business owner. So we were on a call last week and we just created this completely brand new target market for her that is gonna open up so many doors because she has so many connections, right? And we're in the middle of strategizing and it's gonna be massive, right? We wouldn't have done that. We wouldn't have figured that out if we didn't have a powwow. So, that's one of her target market areas, right? You usually have about two or three, definitely two um, and sometimes three. So we're all in different parts of the country. You're gonna have different customers depending on who you are and where, you, where you're located, okay? Um, and if you're rural, if you're suburban, all different types of things. So I myself, I can walk into a neighborhood near me, okay? And I, I know whether or not they're going to be able to afford my services. I bought a New Hampshire up here. I'm about 15 minutes away. So I'm going to tell you honestly, I closed less clients in New Hampshire um, because Massachusetts is more expensive and Massachusetts people will pay. And New Hampshire people, some people, not all, some people will don't. I closed less in New Hampshire. So what does that mean for me? I don't advertise in New Hampshire. Why am I going to waste my time? If I'm going to close less accounts, why would I waste my time? So that's one example, okay? Um, right off the bat, I don't add spend when we run campaigns. I don't spend a lot of time. Like I said, in New Hampshire, I don't advertise. I don't pay for anything because it's a waste of time for me. If I get business from New Hampshire that will actually make it onto my schedule, perfect. Um, but some will and some won't. I close more accounts in Massachusetts. Um, so I specifically know where the money is. I know where the rich people are. I know where the cheap people live. And I know which clients are not my target market. So I know it so well that when I get a call for an estimate, I recognize the certain target market clients. I don't even go to the estimate. I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not into wasting time. I believe in in-person estimates, so I don't have time to waste, okay? That's how you do it, okay? If you want to scale, you have to know your target market cold, okay? Is this making sense? Let me know if this is making sense. I'm gonna jump on. Hey, Laurie from Boston. <laughs> Sydney, plans and goals. We actually just updated our hiring and revenue growth, personal goals. Sydney's a planner. We just finished working together for six months. Sydney's a planner. Planner. All right, what's your third one? Underpricing your products and services. Who is guilty of this? Probably half of you, if not more. It's very common, so don't take offense to it. It's very common. Charging significantly less than the market value to attract your customers is only going to put you in a position to not be able to pay your business bills. It may be okay if you want to solo clean five days a week, because your bills are less, you're not paying payroll taxes and things are different, but if you wanna build your company and you wanna scale and have time freedom and a whole team that goes out and cleans your clients' homes when you don't have to, you have to be able to pay the bills. And this means increasing your prices. Another thing I teach my clients, it's one of the first things we do, it's like that target market, there's like three of them. Um, we do a pricing audit and we see what you're charging, right? And see if we can raise them. So, and the crazy thing is, is that your clients, most of them are going to stay with you. Even though you're panicking inside, it's all up here. Your next one, number four, is overexpansion. You might see some companies online expanding, looking like they have it all. Let me tell you something. It's not all sunshine and roses. Things are not what they seem sometimes, right? Do you know that you can make just as much profit at the, at the half a million dollar mark than the million dollar mark? Not a lot of people know that. You're like, oh, a million dollars, ooh. There's a lot more stress that comes with a million dollars that you may or may not wanna have in your life, right? 
Sometimes we realize after we grow the, our businesses that it's really not about the money, it's about the time freedom. Trust me when I tell you this. A lot of men will be like, oh, I want one million, two million, three million. Different model than women. Women build businesses differently, right? So people who rapidly over you know, overexpand their business without considering financial and operational consequences are just crazy. <laughs> it's just ego at this point, right? I'm going to just tell it like it is because I'm the northern girl from Boston. It's just ego. Because as you try and expand to one million in revenue, which is totally possible in the cleaning industry, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of people. We're headed up there, but we, we're not just doing it from cleaning, right? We have a, a different um, revenue stream coming in, which is the power washing, right? You have to double your expenses. And sometimes you can't handle that, right? I know some of you that I've worked with before have a hard time even getting lines of credit. So if you're not willing to get lines of credit, how are you going to build a million dollar business? Because you need lines of credit to build it. You need cash flow. That's how it does it. Okay, that's how it does it. So people who rapidly overexpand, right? They're just, they're just nuts without having a plan. You obviously have to have a big strategic plan to do that. You have more staff, you have more supplies, and it's really easy for this to get out of hand if you were just focus on scaling and looking like the best in your industry. Guess what? Who cares if you look the best in your industry? You want what's good for your family and for yourself. Like, let's be real for a second. Who really cares? So to scale to the million dollar mark, you surely can do it, but it has to be strategic. It has to be intentional and it has to be smart, right? It can't be dumb. It's a lot more work. And it's easy for the profits to go down and that is not for everyone okay not every one of us wants to build a million dollar company not every one of us can handle it mentally emotionally there's so much that goes into it okay so much it has to be done very strategic and planned out over time it's not something that you just say I want to make a million dollar cleaning company but you don't know what the heck is going on right so <laughs> You can make just as much profit at the half a million as the million. The million, you have more people, more expenses, more things. And like I said, it can be done for sure. It can be done, um, but there's a lot more work than people actually think. Okay, so your next one, I don't know if we're on, I think we're on five. Ineffective marketing or no marketing, right? If you want to fail, don't invest in marketing strategies or advertising. Rely solely on word of mouth and hope that the customers will magically find you. You have to be intentional and strategic about your marketing, but you can't do this if you don't know who your target market is. So see how this is lining up, right? Who is your ideal customer is going to lay the path for how you market to find more of those customers that you have. You cannot scale unless you know exactly who your target market is and where they hang out so you can find them, okay? So again, you have to have a definitive strategy that you carry out on a weekly basis, right? And a lot of you will stop and start this process, right? I am I am a consistency queen. I make people work on their consistency, right? We post every single week, every single week, right? We don't have weeks where we don't post or two months where we don't post, right? You have to be consistent so people will find you. So. Sometimes I see this, I see, you know, some people will be like, oh, I need more clients. And you throw a few posts up on the Facebook community groups. You, you know, maybe you get one or two, uh, maybe you don't get any, all right? And then you stop, right? You stop marketing. So who is guilty of this? Who is guilty of stopping and starting marketing? I want you guys to be honest, be honest, okay? Some people will throw posts up a week and they'll be like, I didn't get anyone. You need to do this over time like it's the Bible like it's making breakfast in the morning you have to do it every single week people will not see you until they see you five to seven times per week they will not pick up the phone they will not message you until they see your name over and over and over again so if you're posting once a week it's gonna take them two months right so you have to post 
frequently and often and your content has to be different and engaging okay you can't you can't just say things like oh I have two spots available on Wednesday or I have a spot for a deep clean on Friday um, no November 15th right that is like amateur level all right we don't we don't do that um, so who's guilty of this I'm gonna check in sometimes I forget keep it on your schedule make make a day Sydney that you post um, I'm looking at Belinda's thing we've been guilty of this it's been a while Belinda you gotta be posting on Facebook to get more clients stopping and starting it's common it's common that's why you have to have a schedule hi Sophia Hello. this is sad I'm gonna say Sophia so Pia her real name is Sarah she is my new community manager and she is helping me get all this amazing material to everyone so you can have a great experience in here um, the reason why her name is Pia is because her first daughter's name is Sophia and couldn't say her own name so she called herself Pia so that's why Pia is actually Sarah just so everybody knows <laughs> Right? I wanted to explain it to everyone, um, Sarah, so everyone understood. Um, so it's very, it's difficult. It's very difficult to, you know, you stop and start all the time. I was guilty of this in the beginning. I'm not going to lie, right? So if you want more clients, you have to be very, very consistent in your posting, okay? I mean, think of it this way. So companies have marketing divisions. All they do is market and create content and post it, right? So. Think of it like that. If you're still in the field cleaning and you're doing the scheduling, the marketing, the payroll, all that stuff, another company that has a complete marketing person with them is going to be able to post a lot more than you. So that's why I help people get out of the field. So the next one makes me cringe. Poor customer service, poor communication, right? If you want to fail, ignore your customer complaints, provide subpar customer service. Negative customer experiences can lead to a bad reputation and loss of customers and nobody wants to lose customers when you work so hard to acquire them, right? So you have to provide a great customer experience, talking to them when there are concerns, making them feel heard and acknowledging them is super important in keeping a client if they've had a bad experience, okay? This can happen when you're overwhelmed. You might forget to get back to someone, especially if you're in the field, but this, trust me, this is just as important in finding new clients as um, the customer experience is just as important, right? Once you get that client, you can now you get to keep them happy, okay? Next one, ignoring technology and innovation. This sometimes people don't like to follow. If you refuse to adopt new technologies or adapt to changing industry trends, your business will eventually fail. Stagnation can make your business completely obsolete. So you need a CRM to keep track of your clients. There is no way around it. You won't be able to scale if you don't have one, right? That's one example. The implementation of technology allows you to move faster, okay? Allows you to move faster, it allows you to be organized, and it allows you to scale. Ultimately, it's gonna make your life easier once you learn it and it organizes you. And this is how you can grow your client base from 60 to 160 to 260 and so on and so forth up the line. That's only one example, okay? So when you're writing everything down on paper over time, it becomes increasingly difficult to function. So you have no choice, but you need to depend on technology and stop texting your clients from your phone. How do I know you're doing that? Because I did it. <laughs> I did it when I first started my cleaning business. And then I got smart and I got a CRM. I use Jobber. Um, if anyone has questions about that, um, I have a code for Jobber and you get two months off if you're looking for a new service. So we love it. We did a training on it. My husband did a training on it. Um, and all my clients got to see it or be on the training. Um, it was part of the free, <laughs> the free package because they were one of my clients so next one neglecting finances who here is not keeping accurate financial records 
Let's do a show of hands of that. I'll continue, but I want to see show of hands. So maybe you're spending too much on supplies. Maybe you're buying all retail stuff, right? If you're spending too, if you're buying retail, you're spending too much. That's one thing you have to look at. Um, not doing a budget, just spending aimlessly, right? Without a plan, impulsively like, oh, I need this for my business, but failing to check the budget and seeing if you're keeping within the budget or if you're growing clients, if it's you know allowing you, are you buying enough? Are you buying too much to, for the growth, right? Um, again, a plan. It's really important to do this to keep everything in check. Your next one, mismanaging your cash flow. Spending money as soon as it comes in without building a financial cushion. I bet some of you are guilty of this, especially if you have commingling of funds going in your personal account when it shouldn't be going in your personal account. And you get a lot of trouble for this. How I know I used to do it. Okay. Um, commingling of funds is bad. Just taking money out of the business and putting it into your personal bank account is very bad. Has to be done the right way. Okay. Cash flow problems, inability to cover expenses, not to mention an accounting nightmare, and you could get in trouble with the IRS. Don't do this at home. <laughs> um, and taking payments from Venmo. Is it your personal Venmo? Is it a business Venmo? Because business isn't tax free. And a lot of your payments, you know, it's personal Ven Venmo, but they're eventually going to catch up to you, okay? They will send you a 1099. If you're on business, they send you a 1099. And if they figure out that you're running a business and you're running it through your personal Venmo, they're gonna find you <laughs> eventually, right? Um, they automatically send you a 1099. You have to claim this. So you gotta make sure, just do it correctly from the beginning, right? Do it correctly from the beginning, okay? The next one is disregarding employee satisfaction not caring about their experiences at your company. This is why there's high turnover in certain companies, right? Treating your employees poorly, not listening to them, right? It creates a toxic work environment. This is gonna to lead to high turnover and decreased productivity and nobody wants a high turnover because you just spend all this time training them and getting them into your clients' houses, right? Employees, is an entire division of your company. And we could spend weeks on this topic. It's so vast. Employees want good working conditions. And some of the big franchises fail miserably at doing this because they're too focused on the numbers, okay? The maids, which is a big franchise, you all know it. The maids near me, it's on the same street as me. They closed because they weren't paying their staff well, right? Their people were quitting on them in droves. And this guy eventually had to sell his client list to another maid's franchise, like 20 miles down the road, and he went out of business. It was during COVID, he couldn't do it. He didn't care about his employees. He was paying them like $12 an hour. It was crazy, right? He closed his business after 25 years. You have to take care of your people because they're your lifeblood and they need to be treated right because they can go get any job. They can go to Dunkin' Donuts, then go to McDonald's and go you know, to a million places and make the same amount of money for less physical work, okay? That's the big thing. So you have to treat them right. You have to treat them right. Your next one is ineffective leadership. What's that look like, right? Be a poor leader by failing to communicate, all right? Being afraid to let them know when they've done something wrong or they could do something a little bit better. It's all the way in your phrasing, right? Motivating your teams, failing to motivate your teams. Um, blowing off decisions, not making decisions. You have to make decisions if you're the boss. That's just the way it is. And it takes time to develop these leadership skills, so don't beat yourself up, okay? But as the boss, this is the role you've chosen. So if you want the good life, if you want the freedom, you have to learn how to be compassionate. It's probably in you. You just have to be able to learn how to portray the compassionate and understanding and not freak out when something, you know, is going wrong or show crazy emotions, right? If there's a situation that arises, you have to be calm, cool, and collective, right? You have to be calm, cool, and collective. Um, giving up easily. Here's your next one, your last one. As soon as you encounter a challenge, you throw in the towel rather than persevering and seeking solutions. Let me tell you something. As a leader, as a CEO, you are constantly 
making solutions, putting fires out, solving problems. That's what you do. So if you want your business to fail, give up easily. Give up easily. I guarantee you it'll fail, right? You always have to know how to handle tough decisions. And over time, you build resilience, right? And it becomes easier to make decisions. And none of them will feel like a big deal to you once you've done it and you get seasoned a little bit, right? My staff sees me and counter things and they say to me, how are you so calm, right? I'm just calm, cool, collected. I don't let anything bother me. There's enough stuff that will bother, that needs to bother me. That stuff doesn't need to bother me, right? I refuse to go on a roller coaster of consistent emotions, up and down, up and down. I'm gonna tell you a story. This is a real story, it just happened. This is a fresh story, okay? One of my girls was in one of my company cars, my Kia Sportage, and was backing out of a driveway, backed into an Audi Q5. Yeah, yeah, it couldn't be a Honda Accord. It had to be an Audi Q5 in, in the wealthy town of Andover, right? It couldn't be anything else. $1,600 to fix it out of pocket um, if I don't want to run it through insurance, which is what I don't want to run it through insurance. The people agreed $1,600, right? So she's freaking out. She's on the verge of tears, Liz. And I had to remain calm. Why? Because all the other girls were freaking out. Accidents happen. She didn't mean to do it. She was backing out. She didn't smash it. She backed out. And when she backed out, she hit the bumper. The bumper cracked. A couple of other pieces cracked on the Audi, and the Audi isn't cheap. So $1,600 later. So shit happens, and you have to deal with it. You're the boss. You can't be yelling and screaming. You can't fire her. It was an accident, okay? So many, many decisions are tough and choices await you when you own a business, but it's how you react and handle is where how it counts, right? So don't quit, please. Don't be a snowflake. <laughs> Keep going. This gets easier to handle the decisions. You have to trust me. It gets easier, okay? Um, Jackie, hi, Jackie. Um, does that mean don't use no so you can use Venmo you just have to um, you just have to like they'll give you a 1099 if you use a business Venmo they give you a 1099 and then you just have to claim it um, but honestly Venmo is a tracking nightmare when you scale like we had a bunch of people on Venmo and then you know you send them their their link they, they forget to pay and then you forget three or four clients later they haven't forgotten and then you're out 800 bucks right so I only have two clients out of like my 200 something, 50, 60 clients that use Venmo because we told people we stopped using it because it was a tracking nightmare. Um, thank you, Sarah, for letting me see that. Um, I've got five accounts, it's awesome. What am I, Candace, I have five accounts, it's awesome. What does that mean? Jobber is amazing, yes! Jobber is amazing. Um, Oh, of course, Jackie. Jackie, where are you from? I think I don't know, know if I've seen you um, on the call yet. Tell me where you're from. Um, Sydney plans everything. <laughs> we know this. Sydney plans her plans. <laughs> oh, Sydney plans her plans. Um, so, if you avoid doing these things, you will dramatically increase your chances of success. Right? Don't do these things dramatically improve. So if any of you are struggling that you're watching this with any of the things, the 12 things I mentioned above currently that you're doing in your business, we should have a chat. I have a few spots left. Loose, I can't talk. I have a few spots um, still available for the drop them up and scale accelerator. I would love to help and support one or two or three of you in your cleaning business journey so dm me let me know if you're ready to make some big changes that's what i do i work with people that are ready to make big changes because i want you to get the most of everything i want you to grow i want you to scale and i want you to have amazing success and you know i will tell you um you know some people aren't ready they're not ready to commit to the work you know the, the program is a six-month program um, it's calls once a week for six weeks. That's 24 calls. The people 
They double, triple, and quadruple their revenue and hire teams and get out of the field of the people that show up for themselves, okay? it's There's no way around this. So if you're showing up to class, if you're doing all the homework, because there's over 100 pages in the, um, in the course, if you're doing all the homework and you're truly working on it, there's no way you can fail. The only way you fail is if you don't do the work. That's it, right? So I'd love to help you. Let me know. Um, I'd love to help make some changes for your business, um, help you grow your revenues, grow your teams, and stop cleaning because all of us didn't get into a business to clean five days a week for the rest of our lives, right? Yep, that's the way to do it. Five buckets, yep, five buckets. There you go. Oh, Candace, I see what you're talking about. Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Santa Rosa, is that, where is Santa Rosa? Is that near... Are you are you nor, you're north of Palm Springs maybe right maybe I love California I do I do Let's see anywhere else well I hope you ladies all have a wonderful evening like I said if you're catching this on replay comment I always look after um, and I'll get back to you so have a wonderful evening I'm gonna go have a little bit of dinner and then I have my accelerate a call with my brand new ladies um, tonight at 6.15. So I want you all to have an amazing evening. And I will see you guys next Wednesday on the live. Hour north of San Francisco. Oh, wow. that's So that's north. I thought you were southern than that. Um, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. See you later. Bye.